Do you want to save time by figuring out the shortcuts or ways to edit your videos faster on YouTube? I think one of the, the biggest time suckers of creating videos is the editing process. So I've been editing for a few years now and I thought I'd just talk about this topic because um, if especially if you're just beginning or maybe you're a seasoned veteran, there's always new shortcuts and new ways that you can cut down the editing time. But a lot of it has to do with practice. Um, so actually in this live stream, or if you're watching the replay, we're going to be talking about how to edit your videos faster for YouTube. So um, probably a lot of you are using different times, different types of editing software. I use ScreenFlow. Other people use Premiere Pro, Final Cut. Uh, there's a whole bunch of different ones there. But I just want to go through some of the um, ways that you can reduce the time that it takes to create your videos so that you have more time to do make more videos speed up the you know make uh, improve the quality and then you can edit your videos like a pro so my name is herman drost and my channel is all about how to grow your audience on youtube so you can generate traffic leads and sales on autopilot 24 hours a day seven days a week year after year and that's a beautiful thing indeed and I just wanted to welcome everybody here. We've got Harley, good to see you Harley. He's uh, monitoring the chat, VD Workshop. And uh, as people join, well, just, just to remind everybody that I'll be you know, probably taking questions. So if you have any questions about the editing process, how to speed up your editing, then uh, put them in the chat. Or if I don't get to it in the chat, then Put them in the comments afterwards and i'll be sure to answer them so um maybe i'll ask you a question start off with a question um what is the one thing that you do to speed up the editing process so while you're thinking about that putting that in the chat or the comments i'm going to go through some points about what you can do to kind of speed up the whole video creation editing process. So number one is to plan your content. So um, I'm going to put up a graphic here so you can kind of see that. Uh, let me switch over here. So topic today is how to edit your videos faster for YouTube and the first one is planning your content so when it comes to planning your content I think the you know basically it comes down to um, how you can come up with different ideas It'd be mostly I get my ideas through um, using keyword research um, adding polls, you know, you might do a Facebook group or adding a poll uh, in your video, visiting groups and forums. And I find also that sometimes if you're, um, you know, if you're stressed out, then it's very hard to come up with new video ideas. So then, you know, you can spend, you can spend hours trying to come up with ideas to uh, kind of planning your content, but then you can't really force the creativity. So in that case, I highly recommend just getting away from your environment, go to a coffee shop, go for a run, go in nature, etc. And when you relax, then actually I find that new ideas start to emerge. So then as far as plenty of content, what I generally do is just um, open up a Google uh, Excel spreadsheet and then I'll just jot down all the ideas that I have and then I'll you know in different columns I'll I'll put a date like when when I can uh, you know about when I want to release them and then I'll open up a Google Doc and flush out the title that I have for the video and then I'll use a Google Calendar or if you're on an Apple uh, product use an Apple Calendar to kind of schedule in you know when you want to 
uh, release you you know have your videos ready and they're ready to for being released there's many other um, software you can use out there some people use Asana some people use um, uh, what's the other one Trello is another one you can use kind of cards to uh, plan out your content but I think you, if you plan out your content ahead of time like usually I try to plan out my content two three or four videos in advance so that I'm not kind of scratching my head wondering you know what what am I what am I gonna make the next video about so um, so yeah visiting visiting different channels visiting groups forums um, answer the public is also great for all kinds of questions in your, in your niche so there's just some ideas about uh, planning your content so uh, the second point Is structure your folders so instead of um, having them all over your desktop which I uh, often did at the beginning and so your whole desktop is kind of cluttered is to put all your things in different folders so like when I um, when I'm creating my videos I'll put you know put uh, uh, the raw footage in in a, in a folder and then when I've done done with the video, the MP4 file, I'll put it in a folder. Uh, the audio clips are in another folder. Animations and B-roll. So you're kind of creating different folders for all your different assets that you're going to use in your video. So uh, I highly recommend you know using folders so that you can just quickly when you need to get something to put into your video, you can just Say you have an audio folder, you can just quickly go into your audio folder and select the audio, audio or the music and just drop it into your timeline. So, um, and that can, that can be the same with like intros and things like that. Okay, the third thing that can help with, and this kind of goes along with the planning, is to um, script your videos. So uh, when it comes to, the, the purpose of scripting your video is that it kind of reduces the amount of like fumbling around or going off track. So I used to script every single sentence for my video at the beginning, but after practicing quite a bit, using bullet points is, is actually enough. So uh, by scripting your video, you can uh, stay on track. You can also, if you flush it out with your script, you can just copy the script and use it for a blog post, uh, for an article, etc. And also it might help with your transcription. So say if you write out the whole video, what you're gonna say, then you've already got the scripted content for your video that you can use for a transcript, for a blog post, for an article, etc. But um, when it comes to scripting your video, you might also want to think about uh, you know what image you can put a uh, what image you're going to use, what B-roll you're going to use, what music you're going to use, etc. And also the CTAs, the call to actions. So um, so I think it's definitely worth scripting your video. Okay, and then uh, number four is to set up a permanent studio. So um, when you're setting up a studio, the, the purpose of setting up a permanent studio is that what I generally do is, you know, you have your backdrop like I have today. Uh, or with the plants, for instance, I, I move the plants around, but basically have the lights you know, I have everything in my office because I'm a big office. So I got have the lights uh, over to the front of me, and then you have your audio, your camera set, etc. So if you can set up a studio or a place in your house or your office where you've got everything in one place, and all you have to do is turn on the lights, turn on the camera, and you know your backdrops there ready. 
So you don't have to spend time moving everything around, making adjustments, etc. So I think having the the lights, the tripod, the backdrop, the sound, the camera in one place definitely helps to cut down the time that you have to uh, create your video. Now, if you're doing it outside, it's a different story, but if you're going outside to uh, shoot your video, then you might want to think of a place that, you know, that's uh, or time of the day that's in the shade, uh, a lot of trees around, or do it in the morning, do it in the late afternoon, or find a shady place. So just think about the place that you want to shoot your video. But if you have a, a studio set up that's permanent, then it, it saves a lot of time just by, you know, sitting down or standing up wherever you are and then just turning everything on and off you go. Okay, I put number five is film in one setting. So the purpose of filming in one setting is that instead of um, stopping and starting your video, then you just, you know, just keep on going. You make mistakes, but uh, you just keep on going. So um, you might do ums and ahs like I'm doing now, have to get rid of those. So you want to try to eliminate, you know, as much as possible. But if you go, if you do, if you shoot your video on one, one sitting, then um, you can just, you know, when it comes to editing, you can just edit out all the mistakes, etc. And I'll talk a little bit about reverse editing later because that's a huge time saver that I got that tip only actually just a few months ago and it's uh, helped uh, a lot as far as it comes to reducing the editing time. Uh, but one thing to keep in mind is that when you're when you're filming your video and then you know you you kind of lost your thought or something you can kind of do a clap like that and you'll see you'll see that in the audio you see a spike in the audio and then you know that that's where you have to edit that part out or you can wave your hands or do something strange so you know that that's the place that you need to cut and cut that section out so so if you do it all in one sitting then and then you just uh you know do a clap or do something, uh, some action that shows that you should cut out that clip that will save you a lot of time in the editing process. Okay, then going on to number six. This is uh, film your video. Oh, batch filming. Sorry, batch filming. So I want six. We're going to batch film multiple videos. So this kind of goes along with filming in one sitting but if you've um, if you've actually done a script for like two or three videos or three videos you've scripted out three videos then when you've done the first video you're kind of on a roll and you maybe got a lot of energy so why not just go straight into the next video and the next video so if you can so you can shoot like um, instead of one video you can shoot two or three videos and then all you have to do is edit them throughout the week so um so if you can you know if you if you can think ahead of time like this this comes up with the planning is that if you can plan like two or three or four videos in advance then when it comes to uh, shooting your video you can just batch film multiple videos like spend the whole morning or even one day shooting like three or four videos and then throughout the week you just edit the videos or throughout the next few weeks you have like you know if you're uploading uh, one video a week then you have four weeks of content ready to go and you won't be stressed so i highly recommend to batch film multiple videos and you can kind of do them like, you know, back to back. So it's kind of save time, it's less stressful. And um, then, you know, when you're, when you're doing your videos, you can later on add your, your B-roll, your transitions, etc. 
Okay, so the next one is um, editing shortcuts. And shortcuts are very handy because, and what I think that the um, the best the best shortcut I would say is reverse editing. So uh, let me see if I can throw a graphic on here. Uh, let's see. Okay. Anyway, here's a, like a sort of a little graphic of my timeline in the video editing software. And I've got reverse edit. So, you'd, so when you've done, when you've got your video, um, when you got your video on the time, when you brought it into the timeline, then instead of editing it from left to right, you edit it from right to left because what happens is that uh, usually as you're shooting your video, you're making lots of mistakes. So you might have done like maybe five takes or 10 takes trying to say something, but you garbled it or made mistakes, etc. So you say it again, then you say it again. So you do like 10 takes. So when it comes to editing, you, um, you start in the reverse manner and then you go to your last take that you did. So the, the, the last take is the, is the last one you did out of the 10 takes. And then you've got that particular take and then you can go back and eliminate the other nine takes. So if you started from the front, then you'd be going through like, where was that, um, where was that clip that I wanted to use? So you're going through 10 different clips, trying to find the right clip that you want to use for your video. So when you reverse edit, then you quickly find the last take and you can quickly eliminate a whole bunch of takes on your timeline. So Harley's uh, agreeing with me there, reverse editing works really well. So I know that you're a pro Harley, so you probably got, uh, you, you've been using that for years. And uh, I think you also, Okay, Harley had another tip here about, I find it helps to speed up editing by shooting less footage, only do one or two videos instead of three or four. So so that kind of goes against what I just said about doing three or four. Um, when I think about it, sometimes you kind of, in the, in the moment, you're kind of inspired about particular topics. So if you have a very different topic for another video then like if you batch batch filming it might be hard to kind of jump out of that inspiration that you feel for that what first video or, or two videos that are on the same topic and to switch over a different topic so in that case it might be easier to uh, or faster to just do two videos but i find that if i'm on a roll and it's the similar topic and i'm doing a series of videos then I can do like three or four videos uh, all, all at once, you know, just like batch film them. But um, so saying, uh, you know, shooting less footage. And I think that's that's true. Like when you're doing a B-roll, um, like if you're shooting a lot of footage for B-roll, then you don't want to shoot too much. Like say if you're shooting B-roll footage of a lake, you don't want to do like 10 different uh, clips of the lake and then when you go to find that b-roll you have to go through 10 different clips to find out the best one so maybe when you're shooting the footage and I don't know if this is what you mean Harley but like when you're shooting the footage you might think oh I did like 10 different shots of the lake but then you just go into your camera and eliminate the ones you know where the light was no good or it didn't come right so when it comes to editing all you have is like two clips instead of 10 clips. So that would be a good, you know, good way to kind of speed up the editing process. And Lisa is saying, reverse editing at Smart, I'm gonna try the next video. Yeah, 
Absolutely, Lisa, it's, uh, it saves you a ton of time. Like if you're normally editing for like three or four hours, it can reduce it down to even one hour, especially when you're first, you know, when you do your first edit, you, you want to try to find all the right clips that you've done, you know, with your camera. And then your first edit with reverse editing, you can kind of quickly eliminate all the fluff and all the mistakes and just find the ones of your last take and eliminate the rest. Uh, another thing you can do to speed up the editing process is using keyboard shortcuts. And I think this is probably going to be different for every, um, every you know, different software. But I know when I use uh, ScreenFlow, I use a, spa a space bar, you know, just to start and stop the, uh, you know, on the timeline. And then you can use uh, J, K, and L, you know, for scrubbing backwards, stopping, and going forward, J, K, L, on the keyboard, and, you know, the space bar. And there's a whole bunch of different shortcuts for screen flow, so I don't want to go through them um, because it may not, may not apply to you. But, um, and, and that way, you know, just use the, look up, the, look up, look up keyboard shortcuts for Final Cut Pro, Premiere Pro, um, Filmora, whatever, and then just learn a few as you go, or write them down, and then instead of going, you know, going through with your mouse, you can just slam them on your keyboard, and immediately it'll uh, help you to kind of shorten that editing process. Um, another thing, and this is kind of a safety tip, is that when you're editing. Uh, I've had sometimes I've had thunder and lightning and then suddenly all the lights went out, the power went out and I lost all my editing. Another time the computer crashed and I lost it all. Uh, and, and one time also, um, and I'll talk about this later, having a speedy computer or, or a powerful computer, I had, I think I had one terabyte on my computer and I was down to like 20 gigabytes and some, or might have been much less than that, but the editing software, which requires a lot of memory and everything, uh, froze up. And then when I tried, it wouldn't save the editing that I'd done. So I'd edited for like two or three hours, and then I tried to save it, and it wouldn't save it. So then I had to go back to all the raw footage and re-edit. So I spent, I just lost like three or four hours editing. So let me know in the chat any funny moments or sorrowful or angry moments you had where you lost all the footage when it you know was on your computer and uh, it crashed or you probably also you know sometimes I've had that with a camera too where I've shot the footage and you know spent like several hours outside filming the footage come back home and realized that the audio wasn't plugged in or I hadn't turned on the camera or something like that. So, you know, wasted all that time. So a big tip here is to save, you know, as you're editing, is to save the file as you're editing. So just in case, you know, your computer crashes, you know, your, your power goes out or, you know, you don't have enough space, don't have enough memory. And so, you know, continually save it as you go. Uh, another thing is to bring in assets from your folders. So uh, if you have one folder, like I mentioned previously, you have an audio folder, a B-roll folder, etc. Then, you you know, as you're editing, you can just bring it in from, uh, you know, from your folder. So you don't have to hunt around your desktop or hunt through all your files, etc. You can just go straight to that folder and then drag and drop it onto the timeline. So... Uh, that's that's really helpful and uh, I just want to show you a graphic here to what was that one okay this is a picture of um, I, I don't know if this is an other video software but this is um, here is like at the top 
are all the um, icons you know for editing but this one on the far, far right you have music etc but I can actually like while I'm editing I can just go to one of these this icon here I think it is and I can um, then I do a search down here for like mountains uh, cats or whatever and that brings in video clips audio clips image clips straight into the editing software so that's that I found because they, they upgraded recently a few months ago to ScreenFlow 8 and that uh, you have to pay I think like 60 a year I think but you can you have unlimited video clips graphics and audio that you can like while you're editing you think oh maybe I'll I want a cat jumping through the air and then immediately you can just do a quick search while you're in the video editing software and find a cat jumping through the air or a scene of a mount a video clip of a mountain scenery etc so uh, so those are things that instead of searching for your computer searching for the b-roll or sh uh, searching in the folder where you've put your where you've shot b-roll uh, this is one way that you can at least in ScreenFlow you can uh, quickly find a video clip audio clip a graphic image etc to put in there again okay, highly saying that uh, I lost edit from power outages some editing software will autosave if yours has this feature set it to relatively short period every couple of minutes so don't lose much time yeah great tip yeah so check if you are software has an auto save uh, I think most have there um, but like if you maybe if you ran out of memory on your computer then maybe the auto save wouldn't work because you ran out of memory so uh, so it's always good to check you know sometimes uh, I sometimes I store files all over my computer and then I find I ran out of memory and then I'm in the middle of editing then I find oh it won't save it or um, or I might lose the edited footage so and one other tip about um, when it comes to shortcuts or, or just the video editing process um, ideally you don't want to do it when you're tired like you might be editing for like two or three hours and you get tired but you know if you want to put some creativity into your editing you might and this I found this sometimes is like when you're editing then you think oh that was a great job and I'll just make it live uh, or maybe you're stressed out you just want to get a video up there and you kind of just um, upload it and then when you play it on YouTube you realized oh I made a mistake or I left some footage in there that I should have taken out um, so my suggestion my recommendation is if possible before you finish the editing process is to let it stew overnight and then first thing in the morning especially if you're a morning person like me and you you have a lot of energy in the morning go back to the you know do uh, do a last kind of review of your edits before you make it before you kind of publish the video or schedule your video and then you know sometimes when you leave it overnight or you leave it for a few hours and come back to your your edits you find mistakes or you find oh maybe I can say this a little bit different or I can put some footage in there and that kind of you know beefs up the quality of your video instead of kind of rushing it and trying to publish it before it's ready the other side of that is that you can analyze it to death and then never get it out so uh, and I kind of suffer from that you know you can what do you call it paralysis analysis you keep on analyzing and analyzing and then you never get the video out or you end up spending days editing instead of a few hours so and then the other tip of that is to export it with the best settings you want the best quality of your video like when you publish it so look for the best settings uh, of your video editing software okay we're gonna to go to number eight here and this is 
not we did the editing shortcuts um optimization shortcuts so you've done done your video video to video editing but um some quick optimization shortcuts is use default descriptions so um so there's a, a setting in the youtube in your youtube channel where you can use default descriptions so you can put all your links and the description you know if you have like a uh, links and social media links, uh, links to your website, etc. That basically what you use every time you make a new video, then put that in your default description. And then when you go to optimize, optimize your video, then all you have to do is just put in the, the uh, so the first three lines of, um, you know, to summarize your video, maybe at, at a website, and then the rest of it. Is already there because you've added a, a default description so you could just copy and paste your description from the script you created in in the earlier you know I talked about scripts and then you might want to also use these are a couple of good tools that I use and you can use these for for keyword research to kind of cut down the keyword research time is uh, TubeBuddy and Morning Fame So this is uh, Morning Fame. So you can do your keyword research here, choose a video topic, and then it'll tell you, you know, uh, if this topic is good to do keyword research on. And so you can you can kind of cut down the cut down the optimization process, you know, to find the find quickly find uh, the right tags for your video. And you can also do the same with, um, oh, I didn't mention, oh, this one here, the um, TubeBuddy. So TubeBuddy is another good keyword research tool. So when it comes to tags, you can, it'll look at your competitors' tags, so you can steal some of those tags. It'll give you tag uh, keyword suggestions for your tags. So from your competitors, keyword suggestions and then also with morning fame you get even more key um, tag suggestions so those are two great tools that I highly recommend uh, the both uh, one, one is a Chrome extension it's a free Chrome extension you get the pay, paid upgrade if you want and um, I think that morning fame morning fame I think it's like twelve dollars a month or something but you can also use it to um, compare the thumbnails of your channel or of your video with the thumbnails of your competitors. So when you're creating your thumbnails, you might think, wow, I have a really great, um, I have a really great thumbnail, but when you go, when you look at your competitors' thumbnails, it looks very similar to your competitors' thumbnails. So with Morning Fame, you can, It'll show you all the um, all your competitors thumbnails Then you can upload your 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 own thumbnail and compare it with your competitors and I think a great tip about the thumbnails instead of making a, a, a Very complicated, but very beautiful and attractive design. You want to have something that stands out from your competitors thumbnails so Kind of like somebody had mentioned before, like a purple cow. So say you're out, you're out in the field, and you see a whole bunch of brown cows, and then suddenly you see a purple cow, and you know all the brown cows might be really beautiful cows, but where is your attention going to be? It's going to be to the purple cow. So if you create a thumbnail and it's the purple cow thumbnail that stands out from your competitors then when people are searching the search engines, they'll go to the purple cow thumbnail instead of, you know, just looking at all the similar thumbnails. So, so think about, you know, how you, how your thumbnails can stand out. And one, the great tool of, um, of morning fame helps you to quickly look at that, you know, instead of going to YouTube, looking through your competitors' channels, etc. it'll show you all your competitors' thumbnails and then you can upload your own thumbnail and I'll quickly 
see if it stands out from the other ones. Okay, so um, okay, number nine, and I talked about this before, was to um, use a powerful computer. So I use an iMac. This is similar to the one that's in the picture here, um, but I think I made a graphic of that today. Not sure I did. Let's check that out. Nope, it's not that one. Okay. Um, when it comes to a powerful computer, then I think I, I actually have eight gigabytes of memory, but it's actually not enough. You know, when I'm when I have a whole bunch of tabs open and have a whole lot of different softwares open, then it kind of slows down the rendering of my video editing. So I'd highly recommend having a computer. You know, if you have a Mac, then like my iMac is 27 inch, so I can I can uh, edit in one. I can edit on two different screens on a big screen. So um, you could have your video editing software open. On the right side of the screen and what I often do and then I'll have my uh, Gmail account or I'll have my uh, something else open on the left side of the screen so then I have two different screens so, so instead of two different computer screens I can put two screens uh, and sometimes two different browsers uh, open windows and two different browsers uh, on that same screen but so you know if you're looking for a, a new computer, I think the iMac is good, or get a very wide screen so you can put like a couple of different screens on there. Uh, I'd say 16 gigabytes of memory is good. And um, I've got a 4 gigahertz Intel Core i7, which I think is the top, one of the top ones. But, uh, and, and it has the, the computer has the capability to put like, I think 48 gigabytes of memory in there. So if your rendering is very slow or if you're finding your computer's crashing while you're editing, you might want to look at um, getting a new computer. I'll be interested what, uh, what computer people have. Uh, I started off when I when I first started editing, I was using the Windows Windows XP, and wow, that was a nightmare because it kept on crashing. Um, yeah, had all sorts of problems. So I just switched to the Mac. Uh, I'm not advertising the Mac, but since I since I moved to the Macintosh computer, I can sync my phone and my. Uh, I also have a. Mac uh, Mac Air for a laptop, and I can sync them all across the different devices. So, uh, and I, I don't seem to get any viruses. I don't it didn't have to install any virus software, and it's uh, it's run pretty smoothly for several years. So this computer I'm using now, I bought in 2015, brand new, and it's still humming along after four years. So that's uh, that's a great thing. Ah, uh, is also saying that. I also like the morning fame feature, being able to see your thumbnail in both light and dark mode. Oh, yeah, I think I have to try that. I think I don't have, don't think I've seen that. Uh, thanks for that reminder. Yeah, I always, I always check it with, uh, check the thumbnails against my competitors, but I forgot about the dark mode. I, I remember you, you brought that up last week, I think. So the, Oh, I definitely have to check that out. So that's a good tip. Thank you. Good to see Grumpy Man's reviews there. So, um, yeah, so use a powerful computer. Can be Windows, Mac, or anything like that. And um, then I think the last... So what have I got here? 
Oh, last point I want to mention when it comes to, and this is probably, you know, uh, just a helpful hint, is to, um, you want to actually back up your videos. So, um, so the reason for doing this is that maybe you want to bring in some footage of uh, a video you did last month or even last year and if you've saved a copy then you can quickly bring it in so what i generally do is put them on uh you know save my raw footage and even the published footage onto different different hard drive So, for instance, I got one here. This is, uh, was it, my passport. That's a hard drive. I think it's one terabyte. That one's full. Then uh, I got another passport, which is like, I think it's like two terabytes. And then I got another one, which is four terabytes. So, um, oh, and I have a question for you, all you people on the, on the live stream. And if you're on the replay, about the back when you're backing up your videos do you uh at what stage do you uh get rid of your old backup so like say you've got like four years or probably you're not many of you're not there but say you've got four or five years of backed up videos like raw footage and published footage so my question is at what stage could you know you can get like 10 hard drives so if you go back to your first hard drive do you eliminate or remove all those videos on that hard drive so you can just use the old hard drive for new videos or do you um, just keep it you know do you keep it or do you get rid of it uh, what I have done is and, and uh, I've, what I've done is taking the uh, taking some uh, Instead of the raw footage, I'll get rid of the raw footage, for instance, and then I'll uh, just use the published footage, like the MP4 files, and I'll put it into an uh, online backup. So like, uh, like I have a Google Drive backup, but you can use Dropbox or something like that. So these are old videos that are, that are created like three or four years ago. And so then I'll free up another whole hard drive or I'll use the four terabyte hard drive to uh, store the videos and then I'll use a two terabyte hard drive to back up my computer and, and uh, store, you know, newest videos on them. So, um, oh, wow. So, okay, Bronson's saying, Three and a half years old. Oh, great specs. Oh, okay. I guess that's a computer. Sorry about that. Uh, but going up this top here. Okay, so Sharon. Hi, Sharon. Two minute tips. Says I changed from PC to Mac too and love it for the same reasons. Yeah, I think. Uh, on my PC that I had, the Windows XP, I still have it actually, but um, it's so slow now that I don't use it. But uh, yeah, the, I think the I had a lot of, I got a lot of viruses, keep, keep on, I had to keep on updating the virus software. It got slower and slower, so I kind of switched over to the Mac. So that was, and I've had no trouble since then. And Grumpy Man's Reviews is saying, I need to get a new PC. I ate up with Sony Vegas Pro. Unfortunately, it doesn't work on the Mac. Oh, okay, so uh, I know in my newspaper, they, they have, I think you might want to look at Dell. Dell has some pretty good uh, deals all the time. So you could look, I think, I think if you go to a, like Google Dell deals, you can sometimes get good um good deals that are you know in special day like black Fri black friday would be a great great time to get a new pc but uh but look at dell that's a good good pc those are good ones or just go to best buy 
and uh, oh, Katie Bronson's. KK Bronson says, both my PCs are old. Windows 7i7, 7, 4, 700, 16 gigabytes of RAM. That's pretty good. 650 graphics card. Use that for the internet. I have a less old, but still outdated Windows 10. I7, oh, 17, 6,700K. 1080 graphics card, 32. So it looks like those are pretty, um, pretty powerful computers, even though they're old. So even if they're old, but they're still running really well, then, I mean, 16 gigabytes of RAM is great. i7 is great. So um, I assume they're running pretty smoothly. So if it ain't broke, you don't have to fix it, as the saying goes. But Okay, so I was talking about backing up your videos. So using the external hard drive, I have about three or four of those. Um, but say you have um, an old hard drive five years ago, I'm seriously thinking about dumping all those files or just removing the raw files because even if I look at the old footage, it's so, um, what would you say, kind of unprofessional. Like when I started YouTube, then you know some of those old videos kind of make me cringe. So I probably wouldn't want to use the footage anyway to uh, to bring it into my video editing software and use it for my current videos. And I'll probably say the same two or three years or now, two or three years from now about my footage today. So um, so a pro what I'm thinking is just keep the published footage like the MP4 files and store that online and then that frees up the hard drive. So Harley saying I got I'm a data hoarder backups going back to the 90s. Oh gosh. So does that mean you're still using that data from the 90s or are you just holding on to it? I don't think I mean I do have I do have backups um, on my old PC but it would take it would take years to kind of go through all the folders, so it probably would would dump that. Anyway, that's uh, so. I think when it comes to, I think the bottom line. This is what I was trying to get at about editing. You know, when it comes to uh, how to edit your videos like a pro for YouTube, or how to speed up the editing process. I think the main ones would be, uh, you know, doing doing the planning ahead of time. You know, plan out your content. Um, put you know organizing folders on your desktop so you can quickly go to audio files, the B-roll files, the, uh, the the raw footage files, and uh, maybe even put 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 them into subfolders of different different topics. So if you're doing a, a series of videos, then you could quickly you know go to that particular folder. Say it was on, uh, say if you had an animals folder, then you could go to the cats folder because you have all all the video footage there of cats and you can just quickly bring it onto the timeline. But um, so yeah, having folders and um, then, you know, scripting your videos, just, you know, coming up with a tile and quickly putting some bullet points in there. And when it comes to filming your videos, having a, uh, a permanent studio setup, or if it's outside, maybe it'll be in front of a barn or a lake or something like that. Uh, I like when I go outside, I, I had one, this is just a little story, but I was, um, what was I doing? I was trying to do a video, I think on Monday or Tuesday, and nothing was going right. And I was getting fed up and I was getting angry with myself. And I said, I said to myself, you're not having fun. You need to go outside, go for a bike ride and do some filming. So I just left the office, jumped on my bike, and then started bike did like five miles of biking through bicycle trails. Then I got out my um, uh, just had my uh, phone and started doing some filming. Just you know, just because some ideas, but you know, as the tension and as the um, 
uh, as I was calming down or, you know, just enjoying uh, my ride, then, you know, to kind of change the whole atmosphere. And then I got new creative ideas for future videos. And I came back to my office and I had a whole new fresh outlook. So, um, so you might have a permanent studio, but sometimes you might, might want to change it up a bit and just go outside or go into a mall or something like that. So that works for me. But yeah, permanent studio and then you know batch batch filming, batch editing. If you can get ahead two or three videos and film them all in one sitting or one uh, in, in one morning or one day, then you know you set aside a day, you set aside a, a morning, and then as you go through the week, you can you know you can edit like a couple of hours in the morning or a couple of hours in the afternoon one hour at night. Um, I find if I spend six hours editing different videos, then uh, you kind of lose the creativity, it gets kind of, you get very tired quickly, etc. So it's kind of good to kind of block off time to do your editing. So maybe when you're in a creative state, have energy and, and you, know, you can, uh, you know, go through it quicker. And sometimes after I've shot a video, I'll quickly upload it to my computer and I might edit it like when I, you know, after I finish shooting the video, while it's fresh in my mind and I know where the clips are. And then that also shortens the time of the editing process. Uh, in K. Bronson's saying that new hard drives on the way. I'm going to use it just for archiving. Yeah, that's great. You actually can get some great deals at Best Buy if you're in the United States. Uh, I think like a f uh, one terabyte hard drives like forty nine or fifty dollars. Two terabyte hard drives for about seventy dollars. Four terabyte might be about a hundred, hundred twenty. Uh, so you know you can get some pretty good deals. And in Harley saying, do you see a difference in audience retention when you're outside versus in the studio? Um, I haven't seen a huge difference. Um, I haven't actually. That's a good good thing to make a note of because, I you know, in your in your analytics, you can actually do a comparison of videos you've shot outside, say, with videos you've shot inside. So uh, maybe I'll I'll do a comparison. Uh, of the videos are shot outside with inside, but I haven't seen a huge difference. But then again, you know, th there are a lot of other variables. You know, it could be a you know if a topic is very um, a topic is very you know people are very hungry for a particular topic, then they not, may not care whether you're inside or outside. So um, so that's a thing. Like like I was talking to somebody the other day. Somebody the other day. Uh, had some pain in my heel and I was didn't really care about the quality of the video if they're inside or outside or something but I just wanted good information so if you create you know good content that people want to watch then they'll probably forgive you for the quality uh, of course it's better to have good content plus good quality but you know if you're say in pain for instance you're gonna have a heart attack then you're probably not so concerned about the backdrop of the video. You just want to get that good content that will save your life. So, um, so the thing is, you know, you have to address the pain points of your audience. But I would say, uh, for myself, I enjoy. You know, it's a nice day. I get more fun out of going outside and filming outside. The only downside to that is that you know you got to spend more time fiddling with the controls of the video uh, that with the camera, the lighting, you have to, you know, and sometimes there's uh, people going by, there's uh, the weather might may not be right, etc. So there's a lot of other, you know, things that may get in the way.
on uh, K. Ron said other things to consider. What else is going on in the world that day or week? Yeah, that's a, that's a good one. If you know, if you're not, if you're stuck for ideas, you can look at what is the news of the week in your industry, and maybe um, maybe something's taking place. Uh, there's also, I think every day of the every day of the year is something special. Like I think it was last week it was ice cream National Ice Cream Day. So if you were like a, a food channel you could kind of capitalize on ice cream, National Ice Cream Day. Um, but there's other days like that. You know, there's Military Day or um, Donut Day or, you know, something like that. So you could look at the trends or look for a special day of the week or special event in the world and try to hop on that particular trend. So, yeah, great tip there. Oh, okay. I mean, comparing viewers habits. Yeah, true. Yeah. So yeah, a lot of variables there. Um, when it comes to people watching your videos, you know, they, you might do a video that you really love, but then your audience uh, doesn't love. Um, then you could also, uh, you know, the, the, the topic could be, you might think is really great for yourself, but it's not great for your audience. And so I've had videos where I've spent just a very short time, quickly done a video, and I think, well, I'll just get a video done. I wasn't really into it, but then it took off for my audience. So sometimes you just never know which video takes off. So it's good to kind of experiment with different topics, different videos, different backdrops, different positions, different um, scenery, etc., to see what uh, makes a difference. Okay, so if any of uh, any of you on the live stream watching the replay, and not not a member of the Facebook group, uh, I run a Facebook group called Two Video Bootcamp. So I'll just pop it in the chat here. Uh, you can also see it in the description of the video. But um, you're welcome to join that because it's uh, you can get feedback on your videos, on your thumbnails, your questions. You can interact with other people in the uh, in the group, etc., and um, you know, you can all. I don't. I don't believe I know everything. Uh, that would kind of be kind of arrogant. So I think a lot of people that are on YouTube, you know, have a lot of different tips and tricks, so we can all learn from each other, and as a result, try to make a bigger impact on other people's lives. And I think that's that's the beauty about YouTube. You can affect other people from across the world. You can affect them for, um, you know, uh, for days or years to come. I've had, uh, one time I went to a video conference and some, someone came up to me and said, wow, thanks for that video you did on such and such. Uh, you probably don't know me, but uh, three years ago, I watched one of your videos and uh, it really made a huge difference to my channel. So sometimes you don't know uh, who you who you are affecting on your channel, you know, so it could be somebody in India, it could be somebody in South Africa. So, uh, so you kind of just got to believe in yourself, what you're doing, impact you're making, even if you just to impact one person uh, or hundreds of people. Uh, if you have any more questions about uh, speeding up the editing process, I think I went through uh, quite a few ideas and I kind of, you know, went into other things. But I think it's not just the editing, but it's also um, your delivery, your planning, your shortcuts, uh, etc. So I think the big thing is, you know, planning ahead. Uh, really cuts down the editing process. And then knowing your computer, knowing the shortcuts of your video editing software, um, having your uh, clips ready to go, putting them, putting them in folders, you know, your, your B-roll footage, your raw footage, uh, having, you know, having it a place on your computer where you can easily access it. And then using time blocks, like 
say you hate editing, well, then you can say, well, maybe for 30 minutes, I'm going to edit my video. And then, you know, once you get into it, you might two hours might pass and you, you're finished. So, um, so yeah, you got to find the best time that you can do your editing so you can do it uh, quickly. And I think the, the great thing, and probably you, you may, um, some of you might have missed this, but reverse editing, you're, instead of re editing from left to right on the timeline, edit from right to left so you can just go to your last take and then eliminate all the other takes you did before, and that'll save you a bunch of time when it comes to editing your videos. Um, oh, thanks, Chris. You to my go-to guy for a few years. I appreciate that. Thanks for uh, mentioning that. Good to see you. And um, okay, we've got an unrelated question here from Game Insider. Says any streaming guide? Any streaming guide, real quick? Uh, stream editing. Uh, I think when it comes to stream um, streaming, then probably the one biggest tip is also planning ahead. You know, just have you know instead of like jumping on live stream and just uh, kind of ad libbing it, have something prepared you want to say, and and if it's going if you're live streaming, it's it's going to be if you're going to save that video and it's going to be uh, available to the public afterwards. Then you want to also open up with a question, some entertain, you know, make a hook at the beginning, so when people are watching the replay, they um, they know what the video is about. So, and then also instead of maybe spending a lot of, say, a hundred people on the call, uh, you don't want to say, oh, hi Jane, hi James, it's, you know, spend spend half an hour or ten minutes saying hello to everybody, but maybe you know, the first part of your video, first part of your live stream, you want to kind of go straight into your presentation so that you can keep people's interest, especially on the replay. And then maybe through the middle of your live stream, you can keep on mentioning, you know, uh, saying hi to people, engage with people, etc. So the other tip would be to uh, engage with the people on the live stream. So hope that helps. Hey, thanks everybody for attending the, today's live stream for your questions and for your answers, for your tips. And uh, if you have any other specific topic you want addressed in another live stream, put it on the uh, comments and I'll add it to my content calendar. So thanks for being here. I uh, hope you have a great weekend and we'll see you in the next video. Take care.